Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So you guys spoke and we heard, and also we're feeling like everybody needs a little break today from the news. So we we did do one on Patreon that was pretty hard-hitting, yes. And then we just did this one on e Arts when history is a lie. Is it possible to actually access some truth? Yes, there is. And when we're thinking about and talking about our patrons, let us give thanks to our newest. Yes, we want to say a huge thank you to Eileen, Lewis, Maha, Raphael, and Miss Susan Donahue. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, you guys. We couldn't do it without you guys. Absolutely. You know, we talk a lot about the Bible and other other you know books of religion and philosophy and try to get people to look a little deeper many people have looked very deep and are very familiar with a lot of the symbolism out there because yes it, there is hidden within the bible some hidden truths for those that can actually see past the dogma uh-huh yeah for instance seven stars seven angels the seven churches the seven lamps Lampstands, what are they all talking about? In reality, they are talking about the significance of the seven major chakras. And, you know, for people of a fundamentalist persuasion, they're typically taught to be fearful of even that word. We've actually had people say, can you make sure my chakras are closed? And, you know, when your chakras are are not functioning properly, you're not in good health, you're not in a good mental place, you are actually opened up to demonic uh, possession and just all sorts of darkness. The chakras are interdimensional gateways because we are interdimensional beings. Now, the controllers understand all this. They totally get it, and they don't want the masses getting it. This is how they control so when we see things like down here, this number one, this is the root chakra. It's all about survival, and it is blocked by fear. If they could keep us in fear constantly, we can't get rooted. We can't get grounded. If they keep humans migrating all over the place, just you know, con concerned with basic survival, how are they going to blossom? How is this energy going to flow upwards? This is how they operate. This is really the bigger purpose behind the scenes. Now, they'll stress the, the pleasure side of things with the sacral chakra, uh, which can be blocked by guilt, amongst other things as well. And when you see the solar plexus chakra deals with the willpower, it's the I am chakra, it's the self chakra. Uh, absolutely. It can be blocked by shame. It could be blocked by blows to your ego. Anybody ever tell you you're worthless? You're never going to be good at anything. All those negative things can block the solar plexus chakra. Now again, once the flow is blocked, it's not going to go all the way on up. Just think about damming a stream like right, right down at the base. It, it's not going to go up. It's not going to flow up through the other ones. Now speaking your truth is very, very important. And I've seen so many people that are in bad relationships not be able to speak their truth and they end up with thyroid issues. Or if they're having to say lies all day, absolutely, that's also going to affect your throat chakra. Now, the pineal gland, the third eye chakra, it's all about insight. It is absolutely a necessity to take the next step in human evolution. And there is human evolution can be blocked by illusions. It can also be blocked by many other things, including actual substances, again, like fluoride and, and by signals. And then the crown chakra, cosmic energy, it's blocked by ego attachment. It is our connection to our higher self. It's our connection to source. It's our connection to the angelic realms. And when you look at that Baphomet statue, this is all cut off at the third chakra. That's the Baphomet statue tells you everything. The energy doesn't flow past the solar plexus. It, they want a world that's centered around I am, I am, I am, I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want, and nothing else. No love, no higher 
uh, vibrations and densities. And, you know, that's what they're talking about when, when they're talking about the, the seven lampstands, the seven churches, the seven angels. It's figurative. You know, I, I really, really like this. This is such a great um, picture because I can see all the different directions it can go. You know, with your root chakra deals with survival. I mean, we need to eat. We need to nourish ourselves. We need to nourish our bodies. We need to get strong, stay strong, be healthy. Um, there is a lot we need to do just, you know, to be here in the 3D. And, and what, you know, what do they do? They block it by fear. I mean, they have people coming and going and all kinds of things going on the news in these times where people are just kind of sitting terrified and they're waiting for the next shoe to drop. Not only that, when it comes to food and eating, look at all the temptations that are out there to get us eating the wrong thing that can really damage our health. And, damage who we are and then they take your very immune system that you need for support and they say here just do this thing and and you'll be better and you don't have to worry about any of that so that really shows a lot about the falsehoods of how they manipulate our chakras a lot um you know sacral guilt lots of guilt i can't tell you what is so so sad out there is so many people have been abused um on a in a sexual nature and it's just horrid because it really it can ruin lives when when you're dealing with someone who's had that kind of abuse it's a whole nother animal it's a different type of therapy that needs to be had and it's very very sad and you can see how the other system control system you can see how they really do a lot of that sexual abuse it's it's everywhere and it it really shouldn't be we need to protect ourselves protect our our children um you know, the solar plexus, uh, willpower, how often are we just really not able to stand and hold our own and do what we want? Because we some somewhere in there, we, we don't feel worthy. We just don't feel worthy. You know, it's like, I don't deserve this. So in, in a way, it's like we block our own success. Heart chakra deals with love is blocked by grief. How often have we had somebody hurt us or we've lost someone in our lives or something tragic has happened and something happens out of the blue and it it really, it leaves you different. It leaves you a different person. And many times it's the system is what has caused this grief for you. It's made you sick. It's made a loved one sick. You've lost a loved one. And here we block the heart chakra you know, throat chakra, truth, lies. Sometimes people don't even know their own truth anymore. By the time we get here, it's like speaking your truth. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's really something we have to sit and ask ourselves at this point in the game. The third eye, so important to have that open because that can actually help the other chakras open up um, despite whatever traumas have been done. And the cosmic energy, ego attachment, ego attachment can just block you off from higher self because it gets you going in the wrong direction when it comes to ego. Ego is very important. We need that here for the 3D. So I'm not dogging ego at all. I can just see how the system really turns it to something that it's absolutely not, which will just block it off. So there's a lot going on with this little picture here. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And everything that's coming out now about the system, the leadership of this world, think about everything that's coming out and understand how the, it fits this pattern perfectly. They are traumatizing humans completely purposefully. And then they're giving you dogmas that are divisive. They're, they They don't have the truth in them. Not at all, no, because again, the truth is something very different from what you're given in the mainstream. If Satan, again, rules this world and has led the whole world astray, then certainly it's not going to be the prevailing <laughs> belief systems that are, that are going to be true. That's just so self-evident. The light of the body is the eye, if therefore thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full of light. Matthew 6, 22. Wake up your pineal gland is what it's saying. When you can see through the pineal gland, 
you will be able to see through uh, lies and all sorts of distortions. You're in a place where they can no longer control you. At first, um, for me, it came as flashes and visions. Uh, sometimes uh, I'll be in the black bedroom and all of a sudden it's bright as can be. And this is when the third eye is, is taking over. This is what's referenced really in, in the all-seeing eye. It is actually a representation of the pineal gland itself, which is under attack by the system via fluoride and all sorts of chemicals and GMO foods and you name it, including frequencies. There's a lot of uh, things that, again, would be given as a biblical mystery and things that were debated at the councils, uh, starting with Nicaea, such as, well, was Jesus man, God? Was he God, man? What, what exactly was he? The whole idea of a trinity, which, again, there is a trinity in Hinduism. Uh, and many might be familiar with that. There's actually duplicity of trinities. And this statement, before Abraham was, I am, could apply to really pretty much any of us. It really could, because before Abraham, Abraham was an incarnation of a spirit into human flesh. Yeah, well, you know, ultimately, we are all of the same consciousness as the one source. So in, in the sense of consciousness, we all precede any particular incarnation. You, Your consciousness does not come into existence when you take a body. No, it pre-exists the body. It helps guides the body. This is understood in the East. It's understood in many, many traditions. It's just a given. Yet, most of the world doesn't understand this, and this is so basic. The path to the source of your and the world's being is not without. You have to go within yourself. Seek within and know thyself. These secret and sublime hints come to us wafted from the breath of rishis, which literally means wise men. They are the beings we might view this day as uh, ascended masters. And, and this is just well known. We, we, the universe is within us as well as without. And the original Christ consciousness was Krishna consciousness. And there are connections between Hinduism, Christianity, even Judaism. When people mourn the loss of a person in Judaism, they have a, a sitting period called sitting Shiva. Shiva, the god of death and destruction. Yes, absolutely. You know, you, this is another clue of how they have taken so much wisdom from so many different traditions, thrown it together and scripted it in a way that suits the system and keeps us divided. Uh, Krishna and Yeshua are on the same team, and, and they don't really care who you like better. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to promote peace and, and higher consciousness. So when you think about that statement before Abraham was, I am, I and the Father are one, there are so many of these statements that would be taken as a divine mystery or said, said that would only apply to Yeshua. That's basic Hinduism 101. That's the basic Hindu belief of self-realization. The, the whole purpose is self-realization. It's understanding that you are not your body, you're not your brain, you're not even what we would call the mind. You are something beyond that. You are pure consciousness watching this. The best analogy that people in this day and age would probably understand the easiest, it's as if you have an avatar in a game you're actually the person outside of the game, not that character that you've created inside the game. This is truly what they are saying here. And that's a big, big statement. So when you look to some of the Hindu texts, it speaks of what's called the Atman. So if you want to look at it from the point of view that the Atman is synonymous with the soul. So just as the Atman acquires a childhood body, 
just like the soul acquires you know is born as a baby and then you go through childhood youth old age etc and then you just simply take another body after death again the body is a vehicle and it's it's stated the wise are not deluded by this the wise know that when the body dies it's not the end of them they go on in fact there are some that can Remember, past incarnations and even the period in between. Uh, we did a video on Heart's Home maybe six months ago talking about different cases of different children that remembered their past lives in great detail, and many of them were verified. Historically, turned out to be spot on because reincarnation is what almost every tradition, when you go farther back, it was a given. Souls reincarnate. But even more specifically, they transmigrate. So in, when we say reincarnation, you think you come back as a human all the time. Not necessarily. You didn't always come into existence in an embodied state as a human. Souls transmigrate. They, they can take other um, existences, whatever the, the higher self really, really, truly wants to. Mm -hmm. and, and then again... There's no fear of death because life is, is the impermanent side of it. This is the impermanent side of the coin. And that's really where we spend most of our time is on the other side, not on this side. This side is brief in comparison to the other side. Very, very brief. And when, one thing, one little trick that I've noticed as far as understanding your past lives is to think back to childhood because that's when you're closest to the veil you've just come across the veil of everything unknown but your childhood knows i mean your childhood cells those cells that are just starting to awaken they're going to be guiding you they're going to be talking to you so sitting and thinking about what was it you really liked to do as a child um, this is how I was able to uh, uh, kind of turn my abilities back on is I, I sat and I meditated uh, as a child and everything <laughs> turned back on. I had to do some other things, but that was a big, big step was to turn back and remember and figure out, well, what did I like? You know, what what was that one thing that I just couldn't get enough of doing? And so many people are... Uh, in this world they're they're kind of stuck because they think that what they do is you know go out and make money they they don't have a idea of okay if you didn't need to make money what would you like to do and this is the past life information that can come forward so it's it's a lot of fun to go back to childhood and even watch if you have children and grandchildren watch them because they're going to be they're going to have ideas of who who you are and who you were. And sometimes you can really see yourself, yourself in them. It's fun. As we've shared before, there's a big battle, the battle that actually led to the Kali Yuga. And Krishna is talking to Arjuna. And Krishna, from what we gather, is really an ET. He's an extraterrestrial. He's not from here. Um, and we do see him as distinct from the actual creator of this particular uh, universe. He's thought to be an incarnation of Vishnu, um, who is the preserver of the universe. But uh, from what we get, I think, again, that's a case of saying he's in agreement. He's in a, a resonance with the creator of this universe, as opposed to actually being uh, Vishnu taking a body. We, we see them as, as being different. Um, but again, a lot of things have changed over the years and over the you know, many thousands of years since, since he was actually here. But he's looking out on this huge, huge battle scene, and he says to Arjuna, you know, hey, there was never a time when I or you or these kings and all these soldiers didn't exist nor shall we ever cease to exist in the future. And that's when he goes into that diatribe, explaining how we just simply take new forms. So there is no non-existence of the Atman, of the soul. There's no, no non-existence. 
And, and again, while there can be hellish realms, they're not permanent. They're not forever. And no, you don't get thrown into a lake of fire forever. Again, that's, that's the control system's take on this to create fear. This is from the 1599 Geneva Bible. So this is one of the oldest ones out there. And it, it says, The Lamb standeth on Mount Zion, that's Revelation 14, with, with his chaste worshipers. One each angel preaches the gospel, another foretells the fall of Babylon, the third warneth that the beast be avoided, and then a voice from heaven pronounced them happy who die in the Lord. And again, as we know, that's translated in multiple ways. Then you got that harvest thing, which feels a little bit off. Absolutely. You know, it's talking about the 144,000. This is something that's been a big topic. And, you know, people have said, what's the 144,000? These are like the best of the believers. Are, is it 144,000 that get raptured? Uh, you know, what is the big thing? You know, why the 144,000? thousand and and what does it represent and what we get is again it's a frequency it's a frequency and what are we to do at this point in time uh we're to increase the frequency of the planet we, we look at the schumann resonance for a reason because we see the planet is increasing its frequency it is literally ascending it's ascending so when we look at these quotes, and uh, let's go to one that's a little newer, uh, the authorized King James or the King James. Well, a lot of people love the King James. So, you know, again, y you're, you're talking about a certain number, and there is definitely a lot of symbolism, you know, because here you're talking about uh, the death and destruction uh, after Babylon and talking about a space of a thousand six hundred furlongs. You know, all these numbers that they give, they do represent different things. And, and it's interesting to see how long people have debated uh, time and time again over these things. But when you're talking about 144,000, well, 144 is what? It's 12 times 12. So you know, it's 12 squared, and a lot of people have, have taken that and said, well, there was 12 tribes of Israel, there was 12 apostles, you know, there's 12 zodiac signs, must have something to do with uh, some sort of completion, or, you know, and so anyway, I'll let, you, I'll let Cindy share more as we're talking about what's come through with frequencies. Many people, though, are familiar with frequencies more now, uh, I think, than at, at any time in our our recent history, um, you know, you can see all these people. Where, well, where was the 144,000 mentioned? Well, they're sealed with a mark on their forehead. Uh, yeah, and the priest puts oil right over your third eye area. There's a reason why. There's a re All the symbolism is right there. Again, when you look at this, it is all about frequency. Everything in this world, when we talk about spiritual warfare, it's frequency warfare. They're pulling down, we're pushing up, Source is pushing up, the original system, the true uh, original matrix, the angelic realm, they're trying to pull us up. Meanwhile, the other ones are trying to hold us down. So we see that each of the chakras has a certain frequency. But what was interesting is that the guides do confirm that it's, it's mostly about third eye and it's about these times and us lifting up. It, you know, frequency is a lot of fun for me. That's how I delved into sound healing is because I, I had an understanding of frequency beyond my own understanding. I just, I knew that it was very, very important. And I knew that having the, uh, the auras and, and the chakras opened and aligned was very, very important. So I had to sit down and, and learn how to do that and uh, take some classes and get some understanding. But it was fun because when uh you know the information came up the guides were saying well let's talk about the 144 for a minute you know who who is that 144 anyway and you know what i thought was really cool is when they said anybody anybody who 
attains this frequency of the 144 is the 144. It's not a chosen people. It's not just specific people who are, you know, I mean, that might deflate. I don't know if it's going to deflate anyone or not, but it. I have seen a lot of churches and I've seen a lot of people use that as a sales pitch that, you know, only certain people are of that 144. But the trick is, is anyone can attain this if they want to. For us to be in that frequency is to be connected to our higher selves and our higher selves being connected to um, uh, uh, energy even higher than that. But this is something to be attained. Now it is tied into the third eye. When you look around, you'll notice that these um, there's a lot of different opinions what the 144 should be which chakra it's tied to but it's it's the third eye chakra so we definitely want that open this is this is what helps us see the truth it's what helps us see past the illusions and the illusions are what kind of bring us astray the illusions are a problem so once we're able to attain that higher frequency we're also able to help others I, I think tuning forks are so so fun because if you strike a tuning fork and you turn it on and you take another tuning fork and put it directly in front of it you activate the other tuning fork <laughs> it, it is so cool so once one person is activated another it can they can activate another and another and another and another and depending on where you go in this lifetime yes you can fall in and out of those frequencies but this is what we want to attain we want to attain that 144 we want to attain the frequency and a lot of people can jump in and i just thought that was the most beautiful thing it's not a chosen person anybody can attain it and that's like yes you know it's like go team i, I felt really good about that because of where I have been in my own life. I've been down so, so low. I've been in some really, really tough places in this world. and But that's also helped me develop to where I'm at now. I mean, I, I would never take anything back because I wouldn't be able to reach and to help as many people as I can because of all the different places I have been. But it, it's uh, it's been an interesting road. It, it's been a it's been a climb, um, but worth every second, worth every detail, worth everything that has ever happened. You know, looking back, how how could I deny anything and, and not be here talking with you guys right now and conveying information that hopefully strikes a chord in you to help you activate in some way, shape or form and just do better and feel better and be happier and get inspired and um, bring yourself to places that you'd never thought you could ever could imagine going. Absolutely. So as this says here, return to spiritual order. Now that's really what I take from that because again, in the Kali Yuga, there's just darkness. You don't really have the light. And again, light is knowledge and understanding. So the belief sets and the belief systems that we've had in the dark age there's no wisdom there. The wisdom has been totally covered over. And there's a lack of understanding because the control system has created religious paradigms that are just simply all about the control system and maintaining control. But they are losing that. And people are waking up to this. And so this is really what it's all about. It's about the awakening. It's all about the awakening, which is a great thing. So, you know, so many people have done so many um, different looks and takes on this, the symbolism. As we know, there's, there's so much symbolism just hidden in the Vatican. Oh, man, the symbolism that's there. Yeah, it's all about certain frequencies and the natural matrix, right? Let's think about this. What, what do the Rockefellers do, do besides what we were talking about today? You know, they gave us modern medicine. They did. Uh, and they also said, you know, they don't want people that can think for themselves. They only need people to basically, you know, be able to operate some machinery, work some computers, do basic things. They don't need anybody to be that smart. 
And they certainly don't need people to be happy because what they do is, is create uh, misery in the system which certain beings feed off of. They also changed our music from you know, 432 to 440 hertz on the middle C. So there you go. They created uh, a dysfunctional musical paradigm which every single song, for the most part, unless you have some really awakened individuals uh, that are giving you music in 440, it's, it's not something that is harmonizing with us in the natural order. They've changed it. They, they've changed so many things. They, they have adjusted so many things to be out of the natural order. So what this is talking about is a return to the natural order. And this particular person, Luxury Boutique, um, is saying some things I've heard before, uh, too, because there is encoded not only in us uh, and the planet and in nature, there's certain uh, fractal geometries, there are certain uh, harmonies and, and things that just show the fundamental mathematical nature of our reality and how frequency is so important if we are to maintain harmony. The reason why we live such short lives in this Kali Yuga, besides the obvious things of toxic food, water, and, you know, air, is, is the fact that everything is created in a disharmonious fashion. And so this is a return to harmony and to the original matrix, uh, the one that was actually created by the Creator. And it cannot be stopped. And we are definitely here to help one another and to help lift each other up in, you know, whatever way, shape or form that looks like. Yes, we are stuck in a system that makes it difficult, but we can do it. I mean, nature will find a way. Nature always finds a way. And you might see some Im impossible um, matches in nature, but you find them and n nature can do it. We can do it. Nature is perfect in her splendor. She's also very slow, but there's a reason for that. Um, whatever she does, she does to complete perfection. So I think the key here, what we all need to do is sit with patience and just keep doing our best. Absolutely. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.